180 meters below ground, and nothing but salt all around us. The Mayan of Zipiquira in modern-day Colombia. For centuries, the once so precious substance was extracted here under appalling working conditions. Every day, the Mineros faced the threat of floods, toxic gases, and collapsing tunnels. At the time when Alexander von Humboldt visited the tunnels in 1801, countless indigenous people lost their lives toiling away down here. The Spanish forced the indigenous inhabitants to work in the mines. In the eyes of the Catholic Church, they didn't have a soul and were therefore seen as dispensable labor for working in the tunnels. And nobody had to report their deaths. This is why there are no real statistics on how many people died working in the mines in the 19th century. By the time Humboldt reached the so-called New World, slavery had been a pillar of the Spanish colonial economy for centuries. And when they could no longer find enough indigenous people to cover their labor needs, the Spanish had millions of Africans abducted and torn from their homelands and shipped across the Atlantic to the Caribbean. destination after the brutal sea journey was the port city of Cartagena de Indias, where the slaves were auctioned off on Plaza de Aduana. Buyers continually appeared and examined the condition of the slaves' teeth, their age, and state of health. A critical Humboldt reported on the inhumane events seen at the slave auctions. They forcibly wrenched their mouths open, just as we see at a horse market. Cartagena was a kind of marketplace where slaves were bargained over just like any other goods. Whether indigenous or African, here they were no longer viewed as human beings but as a commodity with the potential to earn their owners a lot of money. Major landowners came here from all over the colonies looking for labor either for agricultural production in the haciendas or as domestic servants in the cities. With the slave trade, Cartagena became an important commercial hub of the colonial era. Eighty kilometers from Cartagena is San Basilio de Palenque, a village founded by escaped slaves. Today it has a population of 3,500 people, nearly all of them Afro-Colombians. They're the descendants of the Cimarrones, as the Spanish called their runaway slaves. As was common practice, they had all been marked by their owners with branding irons, as Humboldt himself witnessed. The scars would remain forever, but not the chains from which the slaves freed themselves to escape. San Basilio de Palenque was the first free slave town in the Americas.
Living in freedom and in seclusion, the slaves and their descendants preserved and fostered their own culture. Today, the community is above all connected by Paranquero, the only Creole language in Latin America with Spanish, Portuguese, and African influences. In the 1990s, it was reintroduced to the curriculum for school children. All our lives, we heard and spoke the language in our homes, but eventually it almost died out. The community faced discrimination because of its language. Firstly, it's never been easy being black in Colombia. And secondly, especially if you're from Palenque. Third, we speak Spanish differently from other Colombians. It's melodic, almost like singing. And fourth, Spanish might have always been the official national language, but it's never been our native tongue. For linguistics experts, the fact that such a small community has managed to preserve its own Creole language over four centuries is practically a miracle. The Lumbalu is a traditional burial ritual where the entire community gathers in the village center for nine days and nights. It's this kind of cohesion and solidarity that helps San Basilio de Palenque survive as a community, despite centuries of persecution, poverty, and discrimination. Today, the Palenqueros are an officially recognized minority in Colombia. But the trauma of slavery has a lasting legacy. There are two ways of looking at slavery. There's the physical manifestation, where slaves feel the chains and shackles on their arms and ankles. This form of slavery has disappeared. But not the psychological slavery. Our minds are still subject to an enslavement process. We still haven't overcome it, which is why a lot of descendants of African slaves still tend to deny their roots. Alexander von Humboldt referred to slavery as the greatest of all evils which have afflicted mankind. The explorer repeatedly wrote of his disgust at the injustices he saw in the colonies, to the extent that some of his works ended up being banned there. But to the last, Humboldt stayed true to his conviction that all humans are equally designed to live in freedom. <laughs>